Okay, we're on the third Aliyah, five Vayera, and the two angels. Now it says uh, no longer it doesn't call them, um, you know, Adonai or Adon, you know, it doesn't um, refer to them as judges here. It refers to them as Malachim. And the two angels came to Sodom in the evening, and Lot was sitting in the gate of Sodom, and Lot saw and rose to them, towards them, and he prostrated himself in the in on the face uh, on his face to the ground. Now he didn't run towards them, but he did greet them. He didn't know that they were there. He did recognize them. He seemingly knew that they're Malachim. And he said, Behold, now, my lords, please turn to your servant's house and stay overnight and wash your feet, and you shall rise early and go on your way. And he said, But no, we will stay overnight in the street. And he urged them strongly, meaning look to these malachim, to these people, these seemingly human-looking uh, angels. And they turned to him, into him, and they came into his house, and he made them a feast, and he baked them unleavened cakes, and they ate. Uh, now, he didn't want them sleeping overnight, according to the more fortune, because we're about to find out why, because the people of Sodom we get the name sodomized from this, uh, these people, from this concept, from these cities. Uh, let's just say it was a violent, terrible, horrible place. Now, Lot chose to live there, which the Mephorshim say was, you know, he, he knew what was going on. And to him, it looked like Gan Eden. So, you know, he was in Sin City, to say the least. And there's like five of them, right? And he urged them strongly and they turned to, into him and he came into his house and they made and he made them a feast and he baked them unleavened cakes and they ate. So does the story take place around Passover? And they had not re 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 they had not even retired. They hadn't even gotten ready to go to bed. And the people of the city, the Pedum, people of Sodom, we're talking about everybody, it seems like, surrounded the house, but both young and old, the entire population from every end of the city. And they called the Lord and said to him, where are the men who came to you tonight? Bring them out to us and let us be intimate with them. I mean, this is something that five, you know, the Bible is the Torah is the five books. This is something that five-year-olds read, you know, or at least hearing for the first time. You know, they, they go to Baconists, they go to synagogues for thousands and thousands of years. They've been hearing these verses at least once a year, uh, and uh, if not more. And so, you know, it's not like Judaism, it's not like the Torah really hides what's going on. Obviously, it uses sort of like, like kind of a hidden language, but, you know, this is sort of like wink, wink, nudge, nudge, you know, like, and then the dads are going to have to answer the questions. Like if a kid asks a question, like, you know, he's going to want to know, like, hey, what do these verses mean? And Lok came out to them at the entrance and he said, and he shut the door behind him. But I thought he already did this. But OK. And he said, my brethren, please do not do evil. Behold, now I have two daughters who are not who are not intimate with a man. And I'll bring them out to you and do with them as you see fit. He's throwing his daughters. out. It's like he's throwing his daughters out to these people. And only to these men do nothing because they have come under the shadow of my roof. He's willing to protect these these strangers, although maybe they're angels, more than his own daughters. And so this is this low character, you know, definitely not seen as a good person. I mean, just read the verses. And they said, but again, God sending him angels to protect him. So it's like even a very terrible person is willing to give up his daughters to be you know, molested by the by the population of the city in order to protect these total strangers. So you see, he's like, he's not he's not a hundred percent evil, right? Because, but he's definitely a bad guy. And this is really how humans are. This is like a real indication of human nature. And they said, back away. And they said, the, the, this one this one came to sojourn, and, and he is judging. Now we'll deal even worse with you, and then with then with them. And they pressed hard upon the man Lot, and they drew near to break the door. Hmm. I don't really know who's talking here. And the men stretched forth their hand, and they brought Lot to them, to them to the house, and they shut the door. Not really sure what's going on exactly. And the men who were at the entrance of the house, entrance of the house, they sh were struck with blindness, both small and great. And they they told toiled in vain to find the entrance, I guess, of Lot's house. But weren't they already at his house? I don't really see. It's like a little bit strange and vague what's going on. And the men said to Lot, whom else do you have here? A son-in-law, your sons and your daughters and whoever you have in the city, take out of the place. For we are destroying this place because their cry has become great before the Lord and the Lord has sent us to destroy it. Now whose cry? Like the whole town is in on this, is in on sodomizing people and molesting people. So who is the one? Who were the ones who were crying out against this, this horrible place? There must have been at least a few people who didn't want to participate in the disgusting and moral behavior of this town that God wanted to wipe out. So Lot went forth and spoke to his son-in-laws, the suitors of his daughters, and he said, Arise, go forth from this place, for the Lord is destroying the city. 
but he seemed like a comedian in the eyes of his son-in-laws. So it's like, you know, how like we say the Lord is near, you know, the end of the world, you know, those people out there with the end of the world signs. And then like, so this is, this is low saying this to his son, son-in-laws who he had already agreed to marry to his daughters, but they still were virgins because they'd never been with us. So barely they hadn't been married yet, but they're still considered his son-in-law. So I guess they're betrothed. Anyhow, they're like laughing at their own father-in-law. Like they're not taking this seriously. And, but he tarried and, and, and the men took hold of his hand and his wife's hand, meaning Lot's wife's hands, and the hand of his two daughters. And out of the Lord's pity for him, they took him out and, and placed him outside the city. So somehow they got him, somehow these angels, I mean, obviously this is mystical, but somehow like we have to try to understand it, that this is like happening in the real world that we live in. And somehow these people, these two men were able to escort Lot the wife and the daughters, I'm not sure about the son-in-laws, outside the city, even though there was being, the house was being surrounded by these, these wicked people who wanted to molest uh, the whole family, wanted to molest these, these strangers. And uh, so somehow, you know, they're being transported outside the city. And it came to pass when they took him outside that he said, flee for your life, flee for your life. Do not look behind you. Do not stand in the entire plain. Flee to the mountain lest you perish. Well, not as this harsh Sinai, like where are they going? What the mountain? And Lot said to them, Please do not, please do not, O oh Lord. What? Lot wants, to, I don't understand. So here we're about to go. And behold, now your servant has found favor in your eyes, and you have increased your kindness, which you have done with me, and to sustain my soul. But I cannot flee to the mountain, lest the evil overtake me and I die. What? Lot doesn't want to be saved here. And behold, now the city is near to flee there. There is, and it's small. So he wants to go to a smaller city. Let me now flee there. Is it not small? And my soul will survive. So these angels, as we'll just say, were willing to able, willing and able to transport uh, Lot and his family outside of the city enough for them to say to be saved. But Lot wants to go somewhere else. I guess he still wants to have this opportunity to be among sinful people, but in a smaller location. Not really sure what's really happening here. And um, and this is where we get the whole thing of don't look back, you know. So um, and we know it's about that. I'm pretty sure we pretty much know what's going to happen in the rest of the story. But uh, we'll go on to the fourth Leah.